Good evening everybody, um, welcome to uh, my evening with, uh, I hope you can hear what I'm saying, uh, the camera's a little bit far back but uh, today we're going to go through what I do for um, going from bits to kits and I'm going to start off by showing you uh, how you start off with an idea <coughs> and then you go from an idea to a, uh, a pattern and then from a pattern to a mould making and then from mould making to casting for a production run. So on the table I've got laid out in front of me some bits and pieces. Um, you might not be able to see it too clearly but I'll take some pictures of it later on so you can get a closer view. But basically when we start um, you've got to come up with an idea of what you're going to do. Um, if you get an idea for a kit, um, first of all you've got to go and find the original or um, one that's still in existence. Um, we go and have a look around the old traction engine rallies or museums or scrap yards and bits and pieces and you find what you're looking for. Uh, basically then once you find what you're looking for in real time you go along with your camera and paper and a bit of pencil, take a photograph and uh, do some measurements uh, back in the workshop up here and we start making patterns so that we can produce a kit from it. Uh, on the table here in front of me I've got today uh, a shepherd's hut, uh, a saw bench, a list rail and a tip cart and other bits and pieces. But firstly when you start off you need to get all your bits and pieces together so you need a good supply of brass which is just a box of all sorts of shapes of bar strip, rod uh, that you can use to make patterns from. We've also got a box of round bar for turnings, uh, wheels and the like. We also use lumps of brass, brass rod. We also got to use thin brass and thick brass. We can also use nickel silver, just off cuts of nickel silver, lumps of white metal, because white metal can be shaped to make it um, a pattern, quite easy to work, and various lumps of little bits of bar, square rod, and all the bits and pieces. So once we've got our photograph we come back into the workshop and we can sit down and have a look to see what we're going to make um, and the sort of thing that we take a photograph of is something like a shepherd's hut which you find on a vintage farm somewhere. Take a photograph and some measurements come back into the into the cast into the workshop and start making some patterns. Now Shepherd's up this one's a corrugated one. So all the patterns are made out of brass basically but you can also use as I said white metal you can use nickel silver. And there is a side to a shepherd's up. All made out of brass got corrugated stuck to the outside. So you make up the two sides you can make up then the front and the back all made out of brass and then you've got to set about making the under frame. Four carriages, bits and pieces, I don't know whether you can actually see that um, axles, two axles, and the wheels. Now the wheels are always going to be the difficult thing to make because obviously we've got to, we've got to um, start off with a piece of brass bar. We find a bit of brass bar which is more or less the same size as the wheel diameter. 
and then we put that in the lathe and we turn up a pattern roughly to the shape that we've got. Um, I'll show you this later on in a bit of close up. But once you've got basically the shape of a wheel, then you mark the inside with marker ink, blue, mark out the spokes and then you drill holes in between the spokes then you sit there with a little panel saw and cut all the spokes out so that you end up with a brass master of a wheel. The wheels are always a difficult thing to do because there's quite a lot of work involved in them. Um, and the same with all the other bits and pieces. Um, if you go off to a place where you've got a Listerail stationary engine, and this is one I found down in the West Country on a cider farm, so we had quite a nice day on the cider farm. Uh, a saw bench, if you find yourself in a scrapyard or vintage museum where they've got some of these things still in situ. Take some photographs, take some measurements, back into the workshop and you start making some patterns. Um, that's a water tank for the for the Lister L for the top. And the box that it sits on. And axles, wheels, exhaust pipe, little cylinder heads and the under frame and of course some wheels. With a saw bench you've got the same procedure. You break it down into its constituent parts and there's the top deck. And two sides. If you can see them. Plus all the other bits and pieces that make up the saw bench, the guides, uh, and all the other bits. And we end up with some saw blades, which are just an etching. Because the saw blades are very thin. The other uh, medium we use is milliput, which is modelling clay, which most people use, which is a very good um, a very good medium for casting once it's gone off um, and it's very good for making figures and animals. So if we're going to do an English short horn cow we go off and we find a field that's got some short horn cows in it. And once you find a field with some cows in it, then you've uh, got to measure the thing. So you get your tape measure out, and your pencil and your bit of paper, and off you go and try and measure a cow. The old cow looks a little bit surprised when you come at it with a tape measure, because it's not quite sure of your intentions. So you spend about an hour chasing a cow around the field to measure the blessed thing. But uh, then you make that up into a mini put pattern and there you have two halves of a cow and the reason they're in two halves is because they're easier to put together and they're easier to cast. Later on when we get to the casting shed I'll show you how to do one in one piece. There's also a heron made of milliput. So once you've got all them bits and pieces together and you've got your patterns made you can make up all sorts of weird things um, and here's something that was made some time ago which is a hurdle which is what the shepherds use for keeping their sheep in and that is all made of brass but you've got to make it the same way as the hurdle makes it the hurdle maker makes it by putting stakes in the ground and then they weave the willow in between but you've got to make a pattern 
So you weave half round brass in and out until you end up with something that looks like a hurdle and then you can use that as a pattern. Um, and basically once you've got your pattern together you make the mould and then you've got to try and make sure that once you've got the castings you put it together and it will actually fit. So you can start off by making things like horse shafts which are made from bits of brass, four carriages and it's all just bits of brass made up into a pattern of what you want to represent. The old lathe comes in quite handy when you're making things like axles from a square bar you can turn them down into a stub axle um, and there's all sorts of bits and pieces that you can turn out by having a bit of time and just getting yourself a set of patterns together. So once you've got the patterns up together it will take you about a day if you've got one item, should we say just the shepherd's up, it will probably take two moulds, a nine inch mould to uh, produce a kit so you make two moulds that will probably take you all day just to get those two moulds made and in the meantime you're casting in between and uh, we'll go to the vulcanizer in the casting machine in a bit and you'll be able to see how we make the mould and the production side of it so that we can reproduce what we've got so basically you've got your all your bits and pieces ready for your masters you spend quite a few hours up here sitting making the patterns which is quite time consuming but once you've got a set of patterns you're away so from here we'll go up to the casting shed and uh, we'll carry on and do the next bit up there okay I'm going to try and film the table so that you can see the bits and pieces up, up a bit more closely and then uh, We'll go up the casting shed and we'll go from there. Okay? Right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the casting shed. Casting shed, commonly known as A shop, garden shed, and B shop. B shop is basically a mold store and a picking table where we put 
all the castings out for sorting into little boxes and do a bit of packing and we go from here through into the casting shed and this is the casting shed the first piece of equipment we come to is the vulcanizer and this is basically a two platens which heat up and a jack underneath which presses the two sides together and I'll show you that in a minute and then we've got a centrifugal casting machine which is quite old technology um, and as we go over to look inside it you'll see that there's a plate with a hole in the middle and three three posts and on the outside there's counterweights and as the machine spins the counterweights spin out three of them and what happens is We place a mould and then we have a metal plate on the top and as that spins the, f the weights fly out and they clamp onto the platen all the way around and that what that's what gives you the pressure to keep the mold in place while you're casting metal so we shut the lid down and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin it No squeaky belt but it's a bit damp. And there's your machine spinning. So I'm going to show you later on how we actually put one in a mold and spin it. But we'll go through the process of making the, the master mold to start with from the masters we've already made. So the first process is making a mold from our masters. And we use two types of rubber mold. The first one is a black rubber mold. And that comes in two pieces. You have a top and we have a bottom. And as you can see, that piece there has got to be cut out so that it gives you a hole. And before you do any casting, we peel off or a piece of plastic and there you have your rubber and you peel both sides and you bo both sides of the top and then we have the casting pan which is a rather large heavy piece of steel and 
once you've got it apart, you've got the two inside, top and bottom, and a large ring, which is a mushroom, which actually forms the cavity in the middle of the mould. And you have a flat top. And then what we do, we get our mould, which is a blank, which sits in the bottom of the platen, like so. And then we get all our masters, and they go all the way around the outside, evenly spaced, and then the centerpiece gets pushed into the middle, and then we have locators, which are these little things. And they get set in the mould. All the way around. So that you can see how they space out the inside of the mould. It's very difficult doing this on your own because I can't zoom in or zoom out. But basically once you've got the platen hot, you put your first rubber mould in, then you place all your patterns all the way around, then you push your locators down and all the way around the outside, because when you put the top piece on, it's got to locate in exactly the same place every time. So, once we're happy with that, we've got our clear piece. We cover all this in talcum powder, and the bottom covered in talcum powder, put the top on, and then we put the big heavy plate on the top, ready to go into the vulcanizing machine. And there you can see the steel ring. And we'll put the top back on it. And then we go to the vulcanizing machine. And the vulcanizing machine is a bottom plate and a top plate, and they're heated once you switch it on. And you've got two timers for the top plate and the bottom plate, the red light comes on. Uh, temperature gauge, sorry, temperature gauge, temperature gauge, and a timer. And you set the timer for however long you want the mould to be vulcanized. And these are the two temperatures that you set whichever mould you're using. The other reason I say this is because the other type of mould that we use is a grey silicon mould. It's the same principle. You have a plastic cover that you take off both sides. A top and a bottom that when you've got to cut a hole in in the center of one of them so that when you put it in the platen exactly the same as a black mold except with when you're using silicon it's a bit of a lower temperature and it's less pressure if you're making uh, masters out of milliput you can actually use plastic to make some masters and the silicon mould is very, very good for doing that. Now, it's the same principle. You put it in the bottom of the pan. You put the centre piece in, which creates a cavity in the middle of the mould, so that when you pour the metal into the mould, it actually gets centrifugally thrown to the outside and forms the, in the cavity where you have put your masters in. So it's quite important that when you put the masters in the mould to start with, 
you make sure that you've got them in so that the metal will flow in once you've taken the patterns out when you start casting. So those are the two sorts of moulds and they all go in the same platen in the same vulcanizing machine. So, you put the platen up. And that goes in between the top and the bottom plate. And then you just jack it up. And you jack that up so that the top and the bottom plate is actually pinched the platen in between the two. And once you've got it to the pressure that you want it, because of there's a jack underneath, that you just press it up to a jack height and then put the switch on, set your temperatures, set the timer and then just leave it. So that once you're happy with it going, we can actually get on and do some other work. We can actually do some casting. So now we're going to try and do a bit of casting. So basically, what I showed you before, take the top plate out You've got your mould, and shall we say we're going to do some caves. Put the two together. Now it does make a bit of a row because the belts are a bit wet and they squeal. Switch it, switch it on. And there's one that what I did here earlier, and that was the saw bench. And what I've done is taken it out and I've just broken off the bits and put it on the table. So what you've got left now is, you can see where all the spokes went when you go between each um, master in the mould. And that bit goes back in the pot. Melt pot. Uh, at the moment it's at 335 degrees and there's about 15 kilos of metal in there and these are the metal bars that we use and we put one of them on there to warm up so that we keep it topped up all the way through now there's three things you've got to remember when you're casting with white metal and there's three very important words and the three words are hot, burn and ouch. So if you go anywhere near that, you've got to be so careful what you're doing. We use a very good strong pair of gloves. Because that in there is hot. The metal that has now been poured into the middle of that mould in there is now hot. But that bit can go back in the pot 
and once you've taken it out well the castings are also hot right so I've done a bit of casting we take the mold out and we're ready to strip it out right so we've now stripped that mold out but down here on the side of the mold we have a pile of molds ready to go in so we pick up the next mold we place that in the mold and we put it in. and what I'll do now is I'll run the sequence and show you what we do while the machine's going and it's basically go round in a circle so push the machine on that back down there and round we go open the machine take the mold out the next mold goes in the machine you put the top on press the button and round the room it goes you pay with the next one you undo the next mold which has just been cast is the shepherd's hut. With all that one spinning, we'll strip that one out. And there you have, as I said, ouch, ouch, that's hot. That goes back in your pot. That goes on the windowsill. You talc and powder it. Give it a clap to dust off. Back down underneath, ready for the next sequence and round and round we go. And that is basically the process of casting. Once we've made our mould, you get a stack of moulds like you saw in the other shed and you just go round and round and round and round and you have these boxes you stick all your bits in the boxes and then once you've got them all together you take them into B shop sort them all out and ready for packing now there's two or three other things that I want to show you because some of these things are quite complicated to make and they don't always cast according to the theory and some of these bits and pieces are a bit of a pain because they won't cast so I'm going to show you this is a silicon mould and this is what I did earlier
and you can see in there all the castings. This is all there's all sorts in here. But in this one, this one's got a piece of wire or brass rod through it. So that when you put it into the kit, it don't break off. You've just not got a little white stub. You've got an actual brass piece inside it. The other thing is the crane. And again, this is the five ton crane. Again, here's one I made earlier. And in this one, the base of the jib, which has usually got very fine white metal bits, have now got a brass rod cast in it. And we can do all sorts of things like that to give it a bit of strength. Some of the other things that we can do, these are the front axles to the traction engine. And again, you can see that they've got steel bars in them, so that when you put the wheels on them, they don't sag or they don't break off and they give the thing a bit of strength. You do that to all sorts of things. The other thing we can do is we use inserts. Now sometimes when you've got a piece that won't cast and it's a bit awkward, we put an insert in it. Where you're showing animals, this is another silicon rubber mold, but this is a red rubber, just a different hardness of silicon. And in this mold, you can see we've got some deer and we've got some horses. But this time they've got inserts in between their legs. So that when you pull the insert out, you've got four legs for it to stand up on. And this is grazing horse. Pull the insert out. Four legs. Ready to stand up. And basically, all that is, is a piece of silicon which is when you put the master in the mould, you put the silicon in between the, the legs and it vulcanises the same as the mould does, so that when you take it out, it's the same consistency. So that when you load the mould, the mould looks like that, with the inserts in. You put the top on, pull the metal through the hole, and it actually goes into the cavities that you've left. But the inserts keep the legs apart. And of course, when you've got lots of bits and pieces like that left, the beauty of this is, the bits that you don't want, they just go back into the pot, uh, melt down, and ready for the next job. So, once we've got to this stage, we actually, again, remembering our three words, pot, burn, ouch, when you take that out of the out of the vulcanizer, 
That is going to be at whatever temperature you set it. It could be anything up to 200 degrees. So when you take it out, you bring the platen up onto the table, you open it out and you take out your rubber mould, and then it's a case then of cutting all the feeds to each piece so that the metal goes through the hole in the mould hits that depression and where it's spinning it throws the metal up these spokes and forms in the cavities left by the master and that's one half And there's the top half, exactly the same, except this one's got a hole in it. So that when you pour the metal through, hits that cavity, goes up the other half of the spindles, into the spokes if you like, and forms in the cavity that you've created by the patterns. And re reproduces like so. And then all it is just a case of break off the pieces. As you go around and you're just left with the spoke. And of course, you don't waste anything because that goes straight back in the pot. Uh, just to top up the pot, hot burn out, nice big heavy glove, pick up a new very hot piece of metal, which is the bars of metal that we use, they're about a kilo, ow that's getting hot, and then it goes into the pot, Give it a stir, and that's how we top up the melting pot. As long as you keep it up to up to the top full up, the thermostat will work, and it'll keep it all running very nicely. So, this is the process of casting, and once you've done your bit of casting, you've got boxes of bits. You've got all your bits and pieces on the table and they all go in and then they go into B shop on the table to be sorted into their uh, complete kits and then they're bagged up in little bags like so and that's a complete set for a saw bench. Take out another bag. And there you have the size of a shepherd's up bagged up ready to go. And you do the same for the bits for the under frame. And here's one I made earlier. That is all the underframe for the shepherd's hut. And you saw all the bits on the table upstairs of the patterns made of brass. You can now see the reproduction of all the bits and pieces that are now made in white metal. And you just strip that out, talcum powder the mould, put it back in and cast it over and over again to produce a production run of what you want to make. So I'll get down here so you can see me. So basically that is the process of casting in the casting shed. Um, 
We've used inserts, we've used bits of rods and bars. I'll give you another run round the, the, uh, the shop and then we'll go back up into the workshop and finish off with a bit of packing, instructions, building and then we'll go from there. Okay? So this is just the table with all sorts of bits and pieces, castings all over the place. Some of the bits and pieces that you can make, some of that is gauge one axle boxes, gauge one springs, all sorts of different wheels and bits and pieces. There's the mould ready to go back into the, into the machine. There's our vulcanizer with the platen in between and the jack and our wonderful casting machine and as you can see now where it spins and the weights fly out and clamp the mould together so that you don't get metal flying all over the place and it just produces inside the casting machine and we've got our Vulcan, uh, our mountain pot, which is full of molten metal. It, what's that? 344 degrees. Depending on what metal you're using, because we use two or three different sorts of metals, what actual temperature you run it at. Um, stainless steel ladle with a wooden handle. Remember your three words: hot, burn, ouch. And. Uh, been quite a happy day in here casting and then you've got various boxes full of different bits of kits as you can see some of them say Priestman Wallace and Stevens roller and they're all castings put in boxes ready for packing so we'll just go back into the into B shop we're now in B shop. There's a box of tray with all the bits and pieces in ready for picking. And this is a traction engine that has been cast. There's a packed kit, a set, all packed up, ready to go. A few spare bits and pieces. One of the traction engine molds. And again, this is one of three stores that I've got of rubber molds. There's one here, there's another one in the inside of the other shed, and there's some more in the garage. So as you can see, I've done this for a while. Okay, so we'll now go back up into the workshop. Right, so here we are back up in the loft. We've been through the process of mold making and casting. And here we are back up in the packing department, if you like. As you can see now, we've gone from there to there, round to there. And what we do next is test build everything. So we build a lister, saw bench, shepherds up, make sure it all goes together. Right, here we are then back up in the uh, workshop. We've gone through the process of making the masters and we've now gone through making the mould and we've done some casting. Uh, we've been in the picking shed and sorted out our bits and pieces into kits. And we're now back up here ready to finish off packing up. And as you've just seen, we've got masters and then we've got sets of castings. And then we've gone through the process of test building the lister, the saw bench, and the shepherd's hut. So while we're building them, what we do is we write out some instructions as we go. As in a drawing, written instruction, all get folded up and put into the packaging 
Shepherd's Up written instructions. So now all we've got to do is some packing. So we pack the saw bench, little instructions in the back, pack a list rail in a little box, put a label on the top of the photograph. Shepherds up, the two bags of castings, go in a box with some tissue. packet of corrugated tin for the roof to make it look nice and thin and our set of instructions folded up One box and basically there you have it we started off with an idea we took some photographs we got all our bits and pieces out we've made some patterns we've made a mold we've done some castings we're back up in the workshop we've got the packaging out the instructions done test build each one ready for sale and that's the sequence of my evening with from bits to kits hope you enjoyed it and uh, thank you very much for watching <laughs>